Angel. Today we're going to be making Japanese style curry together. I saw this really popular SMB golden curry mix. It's been such a long time since I've made this curry at home that when I saw this mix, I really had a craving and I wanted to show you guys how I like to make it. So if you are interested in how to make Japanese style curry or how I like to make this, keep watching. For this recipe, we will need some curry mix. I'm using this SMB golden curry mix and they have various different options of like heat and I got hot because I like my curry spicy. And I also got this other curry brand, it's Vermont curry. And this has a touch of apple and honey, but I think it's a really good mix of curry blend. Next, we'll need about one to one and a half pounds of chicken. And I like to use chicken thighs in this recipe because I like the dark meat in here. I think it tastes really good. So I recommend using about one to one and a half pounds of chicken thighs. In addition, you can choose all the different vegetables in your curry. I like to use onions. So we're gonna use one small onion, potatoes, or you can use daikon radish, but here I'm gonna use one russet potato and some carrots. All right, so now let's prep the vegetables and the chicken. I'm gonna start with my carrots. I'm just gonna peel the carrots first. And I really like carrots, so I'm gonna use three in this recipe. Put this off to the side. Now we're gonna trim off the carrot ends. And here I like a thicker cut of carrots, so I'm going to do about one to two inches thick. Transfer that to a plate. And now we'll peel our potato. And if you guys don't wanna use potato, another thing that you can use is daikon radish, which is really nice. But today I'm using a potato. Just go ahead and do thick chunks. That's how I like to cut mine. It doesn't have to be exact, and that's really what makes this a home style recipe. And of course, if there are any imperfections, you can just trim those off like that. Transfer that to the plate. And finally, our onion. I'm using a yellow onion here, but you can also use a white onion or a Walla Walla sweet onion as well. rough chops. Transfer that to a plate. And we're gonna cut our chicken thighs now. So again, I'm using about one to one and a half pounds of chicken thighs and chop these into about one inch cubes. Again, it doesn't have to be exact because that's how grandma made it. And we'll just put that back onto the plate. And now we're done with the ingredients prep. And so I'm just gonna wash my hands with soap and water quickly. And then we're gonna go over to the stove and start cooking. So today I'm gonna use my Le Creuset. Le Creuset? <laughs> Le Creuset. And we're gonna turn the heat on. Preheat that. Now my pan's preheated, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil and then our chicken. Now the chicken. Just give that a quick saute. What we're looking for here is to really brown the outside of the chicken but not cook it all the way through. I'm adding the onions here so that way it caramelizes. Give that a quick stir. And once the chicken is kind of browned all around on the outside, then we're gonna go ahead and add the carrots, potatoes, and fill that up with water. And then we're going to add some filtered water. And I like to use filtered water whenever I cook, especially for things like soups or curries. So now I'm going to add my curry and how much curry that you add in the ratio of this sweet curry versus this hot curry is totally up to you. I'm gonna start with the hot curry. I'm going to use more of this hot curry mix first and then I'm going to add in the apple and honey curry. So this is what it looks like on the inside. 
I'm just going to break this up before I open it. Now I'm going to peel this open. Now I'm going to add this directly into the pot. Here's where I really try to eyeball it. I mix the curry mix in there and depending on how thick it is, I may add some more. So after this curry mix that we added in there has kind of all dissolved into the water, then what I like to do is I will add a few cubes at a time to make sure that we're just not over thickening it. So I'm just gonna add one more cube of this SMB golden curry mix. Then I think I'll add a little bit of the Vermont curry. Once it's fully dissolved, make sure you continue stirring and turn down the heat to low if you need to. This will start to thicken up really quickly, so just make sure you keep an eye out on it. And once it's done mixing in, we'll go ahead and cover it up with a lid. Again, make sure that's on low and let that simmer until the chicken is done. And that should be about five to 10 minutes. All right, let's check in on it. I'm gonna take a look at it. It's already simmering here. Give it a stir. It looks really good. And now it's been simmering for about five minutes and I'm just going to check to see if it's done. And what I like to check for is the carrots and the potatoes. So I'll just take a chopstick and poke right in it. And if it goes in easily, that means it's done. That went in the carrot, but I feel like it could use about two more minutes. So I'll just give it about two more minutes and then we're ready to serve. Okay, I'm just gonna try one more time to see if it's done. I'll check a potato this time. And that went in pretty well. So now we are just going to plate this. Mmm, smells so good. <laughs> I have some rice that I cooked earlier and I'm just going to do a couple scoops of the curry. I really like the meat, so I'm gonna to try to get as much chicken as I can. Perfect. And that is how you make Japanese curry, or that's how I make Japanese curry. It smells so good, and this looks so good. I haven't had this in probably three or four years, so I can't wait to try. Wow, the flavors of curry are so comforting. It's a little bit spicy and I love the hint of the sweetness from that apple and honey taste that we added. It's very subtle, but also really delicious. So now I'm just gonna grab a spoon and get a bigger bite. Some rice and curry. Wow, that was so good. If you guys haven't had Japanese curry before, definitely get those mixes and try it out and let me know what you think. So I'm curious if you guys make Japanese style curry at home, how do you like to blend your curry mixes? If you do, let me know, post in the comments, or do you like your curry super spicy or even mild? I'm Angel, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you liked today's video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And as my grandpa would say, sharing a meal with a fascinating stranger is one of life's true delights. So until we can share some curry together, take care, I love you, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.